What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. We are here to do a quick review for The Passage. This is a blockbuster season one, episode six. I want to know what you taste like. Ooh, this episode gave us gore, it gave us horror, it gave us drama, the usual betrayal, and of course, all of the manipulation that comes along with the military and vampires. <laughs> okay, you guys. Um, before we get going really good, if you are new to my channel, you've not subscribed, I would love to have you as a member of my tribe. Love to have you hit that subscription bell as well as that bell um, right next to it. That notification bell that lets you know when Miss Honey is popping a new video up. Also, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It's just like saying, hey, Miss Honey. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to comment down below. Y'all know we love to talk about this show, the ins and outs of this show. First things first, there is no Lacey in this episode. And there is no Anthony Carter, which I don't understand because we have not seen Anthony Carter in a glass case. Now, maybe they're doing that on purpose because if we see Anthony Carter in a glass case, we may not perceive him as... Uh, good or team good or a hero we may perceive him as just another vamp so maybe they're not showing us anthony in the cage because in the glass cage because they don't want to put that perception out there i'm just saying possibly um i was wrong last week about the fact that jonas was infected and fanning couldn't get into Jonas's mind until he it's not no they do whatever they want to do they go in and out of whoever mind they want to go out of if they don't want to be in your mind and your thoughts they don't do it that's just what it is but telepathically they can go anywhere and do anything they want to and we learn in this episode that they see what each other see it's no way for Amy to hide from Fanning unless she finds a way to block him out of her mind and uh or any of the other vamps because they all kind of intertwine and connected all of their vampirism was derived from fanning's vampirism so a little bit of him is in all of them all right so the grounds is crawling with security because Winston, old crazy, murderous, perverted ass Winston is out there running around on the grounds, okay? Um, we see where Brad and Amy are stuck in the elevator. Amy is passed out and she coming to. And, and Brad is trying to get the elevator doors open. But rest yourself, Amy. Take it easy, Amy. You all, we're going to be all right, Amy. She was like, I want my book. He was like, listen, listen. They've been opening these elevator doors. Book schmook. We need to talk about the fact that that scream thing you did where well, you ran Winston off and saved my life. I really appreciate you did an excellent, excellent job, Amy. But you cannot tell NT1 about this secret. This is a secret. It's hush hush. Just like the fact that you can read minds. It's hush hush. It's a secret. Don't tell nobody, Amy. She is like, I want my book. Okay, they get the doors open. Clark takes Amy and, and, uh, Brad over to the situation room where Deputy Dingleberry is. And they discussing the situation. Now, what is we going to do? Winston is out there. And if he's out there, uh, other people could get infected. And this could be catastrophic, a mess. And we need to try to figure this thing out. And Clark is like, yeah, we need to do a, an assessment of what's going on. And I need to get a handle and control of this situation. And Amy's like, I know where Winston is. And Brad looked at her like, did I, did I, what, did, mother, you, Okay. Mm, all right. He tell her no. Be quiet. Don't you don't say nothing. And and uh, Deputy Dingleberry jumps right on it. He says, "Um, what do you see, Amy? Tell us a little bit more." Now he goes right into schmooze, schmooze mode. His his goal is to make Amy feel like he is so proud of her and he is so amazed by her and he is so enamored by her. He is just, he is just, 
you know, so interested in her and he finds her to be absolutely amazing and wonderful. And, you know, he's going to toot toot and beep beep and, and groom her, basically groom her to be a weapon of his own design. Now, he been looking through this whole episode and previous episode at Brad and Amy relationship. And he feel like if I can make myself Amy's buddy like Brad has, then she'll do whatever I want her to do. So he realizes throughout this whole episode, he's observing, he's he he's thinking about it. I mean, he got time. Everybody else out here fighting for their lives and 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 barely getting by and getting dirty and bloody and all of this. Everybody but him. Everybody but him. Okay, he realizes because he got time to think. He don't want Brad and Amy together. He want to be Amy's Brad. Uh-huh. Okay. Meanwhile, Amy want her book. This all, this, this all we hear really from Amy outside of rebellion. Okay, and smart mouth itness is I want my book. I want my book. All right, so Brad continues to try to protect Amy. Y'all go on. Amy don't told you where, where she saw Winston at. Y'all go on around there and Amy gonna stay here. No, Dingleberry say, Amy coming with me. So Brad said, well, fine. I'll go with her. Amy said, he, he uh, Dingleberry looked at Amy and said, how about, how about it, Amy? Is it all right if he goes? Like, like she got a choice. Like the choice is hers. This how it is. This how it is. Pay attention. Pay attention to them nickel slick, fork tongue devils. Pay attention. Let's talk about Jonas. Jonas round there with, with, oh, he round there with Elizabeth. And they all hugged up. Next thing you know, they loved up. He's comforting her with peen. And she talking about what it's like to have Alzheimer's. Also, what it was like to have Tim Fanny visit her. Doing the vamp slide while she had Alzheimer's. Some of the stuff he said to her. And... Jonas get to talking and he kind of finally, you know, get around to telling her, this is the situation. It's not going to be good. So she realized, oh, my ultimate end is death. Because remember, now she's got the virus, but she's also older. You know, older virals that are infected with the vamp blood. Physically, their outside appearance is not normal. It looks like fanning, full of veins and blood shot eye and, and yellow eye. Yeah, it's, it's scary. And considering her age, won't be long, right? So she expresses questions. You, 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 th this is a death sentence for me. So you, I went to fanning funeral. He was in the casket. How many other lies have you told me? Not only did you infect him, but you infected 12 other people. Where are those people? What have you done, Jonas? Jonas Lee there, he feeling guilty. He feeling bad. He feeling mighty bad. Ah, feeling mighty, mighty bad. All right. He goes and he wants to talk to Sykes. And, uh, Sykes got her own situation going on. Sykes confronts Deputy Dingleberry before they leave to go find Winston. And she wants him to just bring all of this to a halt. Bring it to a stop. This is going to end bad. He's already out there in the world. Winston is. And we don't know what he's done and who he's done it to. We need to shut this crap show down. He is like, uh, first of all, don't be talking to me like I caused all this. This was you and your boy Jonas, okay? You was elated to get this job. And you came up with the idea to do it the way Y'all did it. So, the blame is really on you and Jonas. I was like, look at that. Look at that. Now, y'all funding it. Okay? You guys got your money, your military, your manpower, all your ingen ingenuity behind it. You got a whole facility built on the side of a mountain. Okay? Which also, ironically, houses an Alzheimer's unit. A nursing home because Elizabeth is on grounds we learn this when Elizabeth is talking with Jonas after she first discovers that she remembers some things again she's coming out of Alzheimer's and she feels great and all of that we hear sirens going off in the background them the same sirens that went off when Pat got his throat ripped over open last week 
So you gonna drop this. See, this is how guilt is. This is how guilt is. I'm not saying you shouldn't take ownership of stuff, but you don't let every people just lay guilt at your doorstep. You just oh, boom. You just strap it on your back like a backpack and let it weigh you down. You don't do that. You don't do that. I'm telling you, them, these slick fork tongue devils, they'll do it every time. This is a tactic. This is a manipulation tactic. But let's move forward, shall we? All right. So after she confronts Dingleberry, he lays all the blame at her door. She contemplates. She notices Shauna. After Dingleberry walk off, Shauna looking right at her like she look at Claude. <laughs> like Fanny B. <laughs> be looking at Jodas. And she is like, oh, this makes me uneasy. She goes on back. Now, after this, we get a flashback. Sykes, Dr. Sykes, Dr. British, flashing back to how her and Shauna got close. Oh, y'all didn't know that, did you? Yeah, yeah. Sykes and Shauna was close. After she, Sykes, infected Shauna, Shauna her and Shauna became like um, uh, Carter. And Jonas, chit-chatting, small talk, trying to get to one know one another, trying to find out a couple of things about a couple of things, because Shauna want to know, what happened to Winston? What's going on with Winston? Because I saw his name dug into the wall behind my bed. I know it was some other people here before me. Where they at? What happened to them? Sykes don't want to get into all that. Well, I want a horror movie. So they go back and forth about a horror movie and pizza and getting to know each other. And then the semicolons fall out. Evidently, if you survive a suicide attempt, you get a semicolon. A semicolon is like a, a continuation to continue on, to be continued, right? It's a punctuation form of to be continued. So when you see, evidently, people with that semicolon, it means that they are a suicide attempt sir. Survivor. So they bond over that. Sykes went through her thing and she ended up trying to kill herself and she survived. And so did Shauna. They get even closer. They sit down and have pizza together. And they have watch scary movies together. Later on, she does Shauna a favor. This all in the flashback. And goes to see a quiet place on Shauna's behalf. So she can come back and do a review for Shauna. A detailed review. <laughs> But before she does that, she won't ask permission. Can, this all in the flashback now. Can she leave the grounds and go out and see a movie? This how her and Claude got together. They got the flirting and talking. And he said, well, you going to a horror movie? I don't want you to be out there alone. So how about I go with you? Want some company? And she's smiling. I was like, yeah, girl, now he cute. We learned a little bit about the situation. Yeah, well, when, when Shauna asked Sykes about Winston and she wanted to know what's gonna happen to me is the same thing that happened to him gonna happen to me and uh, Sykes makes the same promise to her that she made to Amy about I'm your doctor I'm gonna take care of you I'm gonna see about you <laughs> okay you know what she did Amy to my I promise Amy was like promise <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, when Shauna got to the point where, remember, the younger you are, the longer you sustain this normal appearance. Like Clark, uh, Carter, and Amy. Mm-hmm. So, when Shauna started appearing to be more zombie-like, more like in a trans-like state, you know, not as, as bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and asking questions and bouncing her little tennis ball around and all that stuff. Uh, Sykes just assumed that cognitively she was not there. So they put her down on 4B. And Shauna is playing on that guilt with Sykes. She visits Sykes doing the vamp slide. Okay, and this is when she tells her, she said, y'all ain't gonna get away. Well, what do you want, Shauna? She tells her, I'm sorry. I thought she was gone cognitively. That's why I had to put down and be. Yeah, yeah, tell me anything. What do you want, Shauna? I want your man. I want your life. I want everything you got. I want your lab, your car, okay? That pretty little white dress you wore the other day. That was the best all. I mean, she, I want it all. I want your life. I want your existence. Everything. More importantly, I want to know what you taste like. Ooh, 
I said to myself, I said to myself, I said, self, this how the enemy do. He can't stand nothing about you. Okay, he don't like the way you turn your lip up, huh? He don't like the way your hair cascades down your shoulders. He can't stand it. Can't stand that you got a man or a woman. He can't stand that you got nice things. You got a good job. You got a career. He hate everything good about you. Okay, and he he really want to see you not only lose everything, but he want to see you die. Okay. He want to see you be ended. All right? Make a note of it. Make a note of it, y'all. Now, the second time she comes and visits her in the vamp slide is the end, uh, end of the episode when she tells her, we coming for you. We coming for you all. Now, Jonas done left Elizabeth over there and he sees, sees Sykes. She tells him she got an idea. Oh, Amy screamed out and it sent Fanning flying and sent him scurrying away. Maybe Amy's DNA is rearranging the virus that is Fanning and maybe if I can do some alteration. I was like, be careful now because Pat, uh-huh, Pat was playing God last week when he got his neck opened up. Be careful, Sykes. It's a good idea. And, and, and Jonah sees that it's a good idea and, you know, it's hope. It's hope. People like hope. So he's gonna go work on the lab. She's gonna go work on on on, on the sales and getting all that together. So when when Shauna comes to visit her, it's when she discovers it's failing miserably. Fanning whatever is in Fanning blood is the dominant. It's the dominant, and Amy nothing that Amy got going on is superseding that. Okay, so it's disappointment. And they realize in this disappointment that they must do something extreme. And they agree. They both feel guilt. She feel guilt from Dingleberry and Shauna. And Jonas is feeling guilt from Elizabeth. Okay, he never wanted to see Elizabeth like this. He'll do anything. He's pissed off. He's mad with himself that he made these choices. He's mad with himself that he let it go on too long. And he realizes he must do something drastic. And after that visit from Shauna, that vamp slide from Shauna, trust me, Sykes realized the only way she gonna get from up under Shauna, up under her foot, okay, is to get rid of her. So they make a decision. But we're gonna talk about that. Let's go over to Team Evil, okay? Clark rescues Amy and, and Brad from the elevator. Um, he briefs old Deputy Dingle on the situation about Winston being out there, and I got my men looking for him and all of that. And as he briefs, Amy sees. She sees where he is. They they get Amy and Brad um Lock, stock, and barrel. They Amy see them out on the highway. They gonna ride out there to the highway. Now, meanwhile, on the highway, there's a man there laying dead. And the person that took Leela, now we know, is one of Clark's boys. Gets out to see about the man that's dead in the road. Winston runs up. Ah! Opens his neck up. Leela sees it all and gets the hell out of that vehicle and runs into the woods. Now, at first when she ran in the woods, I was like, girl, not in the woods. But he would have made quick work of that car and got her out of there and killed her. It's a very, very strong vampire. She runs off into the woods. Meanwhile, Clark and Amy and, and, and Dingleberry and Brad pull up. They get out, and Amy and Brad are fighting once again. Amy is being rebellious. Brad trying to keep her safe. He trying to tell her what to do and, and um, make her listen as the authority figure in the situation and the one who obviously knows best. And Amy's not hearing it. She's giving him what for. Now, he keep telling her not to tell every chance she gets. She tell it. He's in a cabin. I know where he is. And, and, and Diggleberry's like, you are an amazing little girl, aren't you? You're just awesome. Okay, lead the way, Amy. He's like, no, she ain't going. She ain't going to the to the to the to the cabin with the killer vampire. Amy runs off into the woods. Amy runs on a hope. <laughs> Leads the way. Brad mad as hell. He run up and catch Amy. You're not listening to me. You're not my daddy, and I want my book. 
okay? You're not the boss of me. You don't know everything, and I want my book. Ooh, bread, it cut bread to the quick. Ugh. Okay? Cut him to the quick. Amy don't kill. She don't kill. She, if she in a mood, she feeling some type of way. All right? So, meanwhile, in the cabin, Winston is there. The woman that owned the cabin, he got her strolled out on the floor, and he just a drink. <laughs> she just... Uh, 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 uh. Guess who visits him? Fanning. Fanning is like you, bloodthirsty idiot. You're ruining everything. We had 12. I was like, okay, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Was the 12, the number 12 significant? Huh? What you mean we had 12? Huh? What are you talking about? He trying to talk Winston down out of killing everything. You're drunk. You're out of here drinking all this human blood. You're drunk as hell. Now, he vamp sliding into Winston's mind while Winston is opening this lady who owns the cabin neck up. Okay? And he tells him, since he realized he can't control Winston's bloodthirsty ways, and, and especially physically because he inside the glass cage, he tells him, can't control him, so he uses him. Huh? Are you there? Can't control him, so he uses him. You need to kill Amy. Okay? She ain't playing for our team. Well, I thought she was family. She's not on our side. She's not going to get with the plan. She's working with the enemy. You need to get rid of her. Kill her and kill her now. Oh, Winston, come too. Get up off the lady neck. Run off to find Amy. Okay, so the woman in the cabin, she, oh, she barely making it. Here come, here come uh, Leela. Leela done ran through the woods and she done found this cabin and she done found this woman who's got a neck injury. And um, she decides she going to bandage her neck up and get her well and make her feel better. Now, they been out there all night long because when the woman come to, it's daylight outside. Huh? Okay. All right. She come to, and Leela's like, no, 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 don't get up. You'll open your wound till she notices the wound was healed. No, 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 it's going to be all right. We're going to get you some help until she noticed the woman is babbling and talking crazy and walking towards her. She walking towards Leela. Leela's like, I don't like the way you're looking at my neck. She's saying, your pulse, your pulse, your pulse. I can taste the blood in your veins just by the sound of your pulse. That's what she's thinking. She's just repeating pulse and pulse and pulse and pulse over again, but it's all about her being hungry. Ooh, when she, her eyes change and her teeth change and she open them out and ah, and, and Lila wah, 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 whacks her with a, a fire poker. Knocks her down. She gets up, grabs Lila by the throat. She gonna tell her. Old Clark comes in the door. Pulls the blind up. Uh, Brad comes in the side door, grabs Leela, and ushers her on out the door. All right? And they kill the lady. Kill the lady dead. That's the Lord. She was up there in the cabin. She probably thought she was safe from the world. She probably thought she was off the grid. She was safe. And that's where she was going to live her twilight year. She had no idea. No idea. All right? So... They all outside the cabin. They rallying up, uh, talking about the situation, what's going on, what we're going to do. Winston is still on the loose. And Amy is giving what for. And she just got a ton of mouth, a mile of mouth. And, and Brad don't understand it. And Dingleberry say, we got to find this Winston guy. This is going to be bad. Amy, once again, I know where he is. Okay. All right. Can you lead the way, Amy? I would love to lead the way. Thank you very much. Hmm. She, she seemed like she happy. She giving a little smile, but y'all know Amy is smart. Amy is smart, so she could be playing Dingleberry. He think he playing her, but she could be playing him. So why they leading the way, Leela and Brad is talking. Leela's like, look at here. That that was that was transfer interference of the fan kind. <laughs> and if she turned that quick, 
this could be catastrophic. One bite after ne the next bite, we could be turning vampires into vampires into vampires everywhere. Now, um, Amy then saw Winston in a water station, water pump station. So that's where they on their way to. It's about a mile clip from here. <laughs> so they walk him. Brad apologizes to Lee Lathan. She says it's going to be catastrophic. This is going to be bad. This is going to be real, real, real bad. And he tells her, yeah, it's going to be bad. It's going to be horrible. And have you seen any changes, Amy? Hell yeah. First of all, she talking back too much. She giving me a little bit too much lip. Okay. And, and I don't know if it's that she's, <laughs> she's got this virus now, this viral injection now. It was like, and she, and she a teenager. And she a pre-teen. Pre so, of course, she gonna have a, a yard of mouth. You know, but you have to learn how to deal with it. He says, she reminds me of our daughter. And it's a moment. He apologized to her for getting in all this situation. Because they in knee deep. They in knee, 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 knee deep. So, they get to the water station. And they want Amy to go in. Amy's like, I'll be happy to go in. I'm, I don't mind kicking butt. And taking names and 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 brad is like you absolutely will not go in well they take brad in they they got sh short staff they need somebody with a keen eye and a good shooting uh arm so they're gonna take brad in and amy and leela gonna stay outside with the walkie talking and a security guard one security guard so they all go in dingleberry clark and Brad. And the first thing they see instead of Winston is all the people that work at the water pump station walking around uh, like like uh, zombies, like the walking dead, but they vampires. And they attacking from left and right. They shooting them. And because they don't shoot them in the head, they coming right back. Go down, but they pop right back up. Mm -hmm. And they realizing this right here, this right here, this is no good. This is no good at all. And um, they hear Winston buses out the back of the, the water pump station. And, and he is in the sun. Like, I was like, boy, he sure is taking a lot of sunlight in, in stride. And now that I think about it, they don't die right away when they get in the sun like a lot of vampire movies you see. They take them a long time. They almost have to burn alive, so to speak. So he got time to bust through the door of the water pump station and rip the neck open of the one security guard that's guarding Amy and Leela. Amy and Leela goes into mommy mode instantly. Come on, it's hot. She hides and Amy is like, oh, I want to fight him. Oh, I'm going to get him. Well, of course, they can see into each other's minds and what they see and all of that. So he looks up, he sees Amy. He runs over there. She says, oh, it's me he wants. I bet I'm faster than him. Of course. You want to, I race you for it. Okay, she's still a child. <laughs> she's still a child. She take off running. Lisa's like, no. Amy, I was like, Lila, you have no control over Amy. Well, he chased her. They go to this abandoned place, look like a garage or some somebody old garage. She go goes in inside and she climbs inside of a old car and goes through the other side and she's walking and he reaches in Winston and through this metal shelving. He got her up by the throat so she can't do that scream. I mean, she can scream a little bit. Eek! But she can't get at that um old 1996 uh, Mariah Carey scream. She can't do that. All right. So she pushes the metal shelf over on him and runs out the door. She runs out the door. He runs out right after her. Now she's in like an alcove room and they and uh, Brad lets the garage door open and he is uh, oh Winston is ah! Brad shoots him. Choo, 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 choo. He goes down and he dies. It's horrifying. It's horrifying. Amy sees the whole thing. It's horrifying. Later on, they standing outside and she is boo hoo crying. She been through a lot. First of all, she ain't been asleep all night. When they got there to the on the side of the road with the two dead men, it was dog time. Okay, by the time they killed a woman in the cabin, it was daytime. So she ain't had no rest from even from the night before. Or the day before, because her and Brad were steady trying to run away. 
Okay, and plus she's been exhibiting her power. She's been running fast and using her mind. She she she's so depleted and physically broken, and she still don't have her book. She is. <laughs> and Brad walks up to her, and Brad talks to her, and he tells her, "I'm gonna find your book." I'm going to find your book. Because she reveals in one of her many, many times where she's repeating that she wants her book that her mama gave her that book. That's the last thing she got from her mama. So when Brad tells her he going to find that book, she... <sighs> I'm listening. That's how she... <laughs> and I know you must miss your mama's heart. <laughs> I had a daughter. She's dead now. And I miss her too. She turns around and faces him. And he says, I must think about a hundred times a day. How much do you think about your mama? And and she says, at least 200 times a day. He said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to act like your daddy. I didn't mean to tell you what to do. He said, but I'm here to protect you. I'm here to see you. But I do love you. I think you're an amazing girl. I care about you. And I'm going to get us out of this mess. I know I was the cause of it. I know I kidnapped you. I'm sorry. And she really, she just falls into his arm. Oh, agent. It's a good moment. It's a good moment. Because immediately when I saw that scene, I thought about, hey, sometimes what looks like a breakup is really a breakthrough. We see them argue through this whole entire episode. Thinking, oh, there's dissension. Amy is more vampire than she is the little Amy Belafonte that we knew from episode one and two. Okay, she's more rebellious now. Brad and Amy going to break up, but no, 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 no. What looked like a breakup was really a breakthrough because when they began to reveal what each one of them was going through, I miss my mama. I want that book. That book means a lot to me. I'm pissed off that I'm in this situation where I'm seeing bodies and blood and people dying and I'm getting manipulated and locked up and, and shoveled off, uh, shuffled off here, there, and everywhere. I'm pissed off and you started all this by taking me from that raggedy, foster home I'm bad about that and he's saying I acknowledge your anger I admit that I was wrong I'm gonna do everything I can to fix this and I understand your pain of loss and mourning because I have lost and I continue to mourn all right it's a moment when they both decide to communicate and be honest about what they really really feel it's a breakthrough it's not a breakup, it's a breakthrough. Brad and Amy, stronger than ever, baby. They stronger than ever. Huh? What the devil meant for evil. Come on now. Come on. God will turn it around for your good. Okay? Team good is still going strong up in this game. Now, we've killed all the people at the at all the, all the auxiliary vamps. Now, let me tell you how that happened. When they killed Winston, he died in that garage right in front of Amy's eyes. All of the people inside that were surrounding old Dingleberry. I don't know why they thought Dingleberry was going to be any help of protection whatsoever. How they thought he was going to be a team member when he is anti-team all the way. They back to back with guns, the, 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 the zombie vamps are surrounding them and they closing in and all of a sudden, ugh, they drop dead. Ugh. When Winston dropped dead, they dropped dead. Fanning got, is connected to all of them, okay, because it is from his blood that they were all created, okay. Now, the, the zombie vamps that these 12 vamps turn people that they turn into zombie vamps when Winston, who is the carrier, when the carrier dies, everybody that the carrier built I mean, a bit dies as well. Oh, huh. It's a thought. It is a thought. So before Clark left, Sykes walked up to him and told him to be careful. Just because we fight no mean I want you dead. And he said, I'll be back. I'll be back to finish that fight and kiss the hand. I said, uh-oh, Clark. 
You trying to get us to move you over to Team Good. They had made up in their mind that they was going to get rid of Fanny and the rest of them. So they decide to go in while Clark and the rest of them and Dingleberry are away. They're going to go in and put the lights on all of them and kill them all. All the vamps. Get rid of it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it dead. Okay, so back at the back at the at the crime scene, they all load up. They want uh Dingleberry want Amy. Amy, you come ride with me. Alright? She don't want to leave Leela. She don't want to leave Brad. They like her parents now, but Leela say you go ahead, we'll see you back there. Brad, you ride with you and your you and your wife ride together. He give Amy a hug and sees her on off. And Dingleberry rides on off with Amy. And the guy who tucked Amy in, clipped her seatbelt in, walks up behind Brad and doop, knocks him out. Knocks him out cold at the behest of Dingleberry, of course. So when they get back to the camp, Brad's not there. Dingleberry's like, he'll be alone, no problem. Now, mind you, Brad didn't talk to Clark and said, you got to help me. Let us go. Don't take us back. And Clark was like, no, I'm going to take you back. He said, but I'm going to help you get out of this because this thing is going too far. So Clark has made up his mind that he going to help them. This is what he say. And later on, when they get to the camp, when they arrive and, uh, in Dingleberry car, Clark and Amy, and Clark say, where's, where's, where's Brad? And Amy say, where's the agent? That's when he say, oh, he'll be alone. Amy, oh, oh, my belly, my tummy, I'm sick. They go get the doctor, go get Dr. Sykes. Dr. Sykes has already seen them come into the, come into the gate. No, she gonna run out and meet them at the, at the door. So, so, uh, Jonah's got time to go ahead and burn, sunburn all of the virals. So he got it cranked up and they burn it. <laughs> Amy's outside doubled over. Ooh, oh, my belly, my belly, my tummy, my tummy. Elizabeth, she over there in the memory care unit. She, oh, what is happening? It's so much pain. Sykes is like, what is going on with her? Why is she... And this is when Clark tells her, oh, I wonder if this has anything to do with Winston. Back back at the, at the crime scene, when we killed Winston, everybody that he had created as a, as a zombie vampire fell dead. Oh, the look on her face. Oh, 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 she took off running. Clark went behind her. They running in there to tell Jonas, cut it off, cut it off, cut it off. And he was like, I will not cut it off. I'm going to get rid of this disaster once and for all. And she was like, if you kill her, you kill Amy. And you kill Elizabeth too. He hurried up and shut that joker down. Shut it down. And boy, when I tell you, Fanning came out of that. <sighs> He looking at Jonas like, I am going to open your belly up and eat your intestine. Old, old Sykes comes out of there and that's when Shauna shows up and was like, you didn't work, did it? Huh? Huh? We going we gonna to rip y'all from limb to limb. It's a calamitous mess. It is a calamitous mess. We cannot kill Fanny without killing Amy. This is why we're going to have good and we're going to have evil through the entirety of this series. Is Elizabeth going to change? Is she going to turn? Is she going to get them blue veins in her neck and be looking all horrific? Right now, she's all angelic. Huh? But is she going to start looking like Fanny? Is this what's going to happen? When are we going to see Anthony Clark? Where is Lacey? What is going on? Why aren't you all putting your heads together? You see that these people, these vamps, these virals, these creatures that you all have created are plotting to kill you all. But we got Dingleberry out here thinking just like Pat. He's smarter than the average bear. And don't worry, long as I got Amy... Y'all can set this whole mother sucker on fire for all I care. It don't even matter. It don't even matter. But now we got to keep everything going. We got to keep everybody alive. Because if Fanning dies, Amy dies, and so does Elizabeth. Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. We've learned a couple of things in this episode. I want y'all to chew on it. Let that sizzle in your spirit. <laughs> tell me what you think. Put it down below. And until next time, honeybees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I holler.